retro sandwich ideas from the 1960s. Try this. It's not bad though. The 1960s era was uniquely crazy about experimenting with sandwiches. From brunch witch to liverwurst. Let's explore 20 retro sandwiches from the 1960s. Number 20. Peanut butter and mayo sandwiches. Folks, this sandwich may sound like something out of a Gen Z's nightmare, but it was actually a popular and well-loved delicacy in the 1960s. The peanut butter and mayo sandwich originated in the Depression era as an alternative to high-calorie meat and protein diets. The combination became a staple in southern households in the United States, and in some regions, it was also known as the South PB&J sandwich. Due to its simple recipe, people could easily experiment and innovate with it. Hellman's even came up with a whole advertisement to help people make the perfect PB&M sandwiches. Despite the strange combination, the sweet and sour taste of the ingredients proved to be a roller coaster for your taste buds. The peanut butter was smooth and buttery, and the mayo was creamy and tangy, and both of them came together to create the perfect yin-yang combination of a culinary delight. Number 19. Broiled Soup Sandwiches Okay, surely calling these a sandwich should go against the Geneva Convention, but the people at Campbell's would beg to differ. A variation of open-faced sandwiches, which are basically made up of one slice of bread, these broiled soup sandwiches, also known as SOS sandwiches, came into the mainstream in the 1950s and the 60s. The beauty of these sandwiches is that it can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. Now, you might be thinking, soup and sandwich? Classic combo. But this is no ordinary duo. We're taking our soup and putting it inside the sandwich, then broiling it to crispy perfection. The concept involved using thick slices of bread, filling them with a concentrated soup mixture, and broiling them to create a warm, crispy, and flavorful sandwich. Advertised and pushed by soup companies, these sandwiches were quickly adopted by the less fortunate as a cheap and tasty way to make a delicious and fulfilling lunch out of leftovers. Number 18. Barbecue Supper Sandwiches also known as the OG McRib, these sandwiches were the ultimate supper special back in the 1960s. A typical barbecue supper sandwich would be made up of slices of Spam mixed with barbecue sauce, which would then be broiled and topped with pickles. Sure, it's not going to win any beauty pageants, but with those ingredients, we're sure nobody is holding back. It was basically a barbecue feast rolled up between two slices of bread. A barbecue festival for your taste buds. Loved by children and adults alike, barbecue sandwiches continue to reign supreme on kitchen tables. With ingredients so common they could be found in anybody's pantry, these sandwiches were the perfect emergency weapon for a mother. They were tall, they were messy, but they could feed you for the whole day. So don't forget to get a lot of napkins if you're ever inspired to try these sandwiches yourself. Number 17. Walnut and Tuna Sandwich Okay, this next combination might be a bit nuts. We apologize for that pun. An unconventional yet a flavorful delicacy. The Walnut and Tuna Sandwich, or the Walnut Tuna Witch, is a special sandwich recipe from the 1960s. The Tuna Witch recipe says you need canned tuna and walnuts. But the ride does not end there. You can also add green bell peppers, mayo, and pimento to spice things up. With such a combination, it's almost as if a tangy and nutty bomb went off in your mouth. It's like a tuna salad met a nutty professor at a sandwich convention and decided to get married. So, the next time you're out shopping, maybe get some walnuts and try it out yourself for a bit of a tasty and delicious sandwich that will drive your taste buds nuts. Number 16. Brunch Witch Sandwiches A brunch, as we all know, is a meal that combines both breakfast and lunch into a single meal. Genius, right? Now, imagine if you could put that on a sandwich. Did we just blow your minds? Brunch Witch Sandwiches did just that, but to taste buds. A versatile meal that can be enjoyed anywhere from an early morning to a late afternoon. 
A Brunchwich sandwich is made up of toast, eggs, and cheese. Made either as an open-faced sandwich or a closed one. Cheese is added on top of a toasted bread along with a sunny-side egg, depending on personal preferences, extras like hash browns, sautéed onions, or even a bit of jam or jelly for a sweet contrast might be included. A brunch witch is sure to provide you the experience of a Monday morning rush with a relaxed vibe of a Sunday lunch. You know that perfect balance between chaos and chill. Number 15. Cuban Sandwich Sandwich is so exotic and delicious that you'd want to start a cold war over them, but let's not do that. The iconic Cuban sandwich, also known as the Cubano, gained widespread popularity when it was brought over to the shores of America by Cuban migrants working in Miami and Florida. By the 1960s, the Cuban sandwich had become a staple in these communities and was widely available in Cuban cafes and bakeries. A traditional Cuban sandwich is made out of special Cuban bread, different kinds of meat, Swiss cheese, mustard and pickles. Once assembled, the sandwich is typically pressed and grilled. This is done using a plancha. If you don't have one, no worries. Just use a skillet and a heavy pan. That's a day's worth of bicep workout right there. At the end, you're left with a golden sandwich miracle. Crispy on the outside, melty on the inside. Number 14. Peanut Butter and Banana Sandwich A sandwich fit for a king. The king of rock and roll. The PB and banana sandwich goes by many names in the culinary world. The Velvet Elvis, or simply as the Elvis. This sandwich was brought into mainstream by Elvis Presley, who was known for his love of sandwiches. It has a pretty simple and straightforward recipe. Just add peanut butter onto a sandwich and put a sliced bananas in layers over the peanut butter for that important sweet and creamy flavor. For those of you that want to go the extra savory mile, don't be shy to add honey and butter to treat yourself to a sandwich that is sure to rock your taste buds, like a flavor concert in your mouth. The peanut butter and banana sandwich has endured as a beloved classic, often invoking memories of childhood and simpler times. Its association with Elvis Presley has cemented its place in American pop culture, and it continues to be enjoyed by people of all ages. Number 13. Salmon French Toast Sandwich Sick of the usual sweet options for your French toast? Want to spice things up? Well, the 1960s have the perfect sandwich for your cravings. The Salmon French Toast Sandwich gives a unique twist to the traditional breakfast, combining the classic elements of French toast with a savory taste of salmon. A usual Salmon French Toast Sandwich is made from French toast with salmon and cream cheese layered on top. Herbs, onions, and other toppings can also be added to stimulate the taste buds. If this sandwich took part in a brunch Olympics, it would surely win a gold medal. With a hint of breakfast and a whole lot of salmon, this sandwich was a part of the 1960s wave of experimentation and rebellion against convention. Number 12. Roast Beef Sandwiches Roast beef sandwiches were a staple of the delis back in the 1960s. These towering sandwiches filled with beef slices could make anyone rethink their decision to have one. In those days, leftovers from Sunday dinner roast beef meant only one thing. There would be roast beef sandwiches the next day, and people weren't complaining. These delicious sandwiches use wheat bread slices as a thick foundation for the tender and juicy beef topped with sauces like mayo and mustard to create the perfect blend of creamy and tangy taste. They may have looked difficult to bite down on, but don't let appearances fool you. Just one press of the palm and these soft sandwiches would mold right into the perfect size for you. Roast beef sandwiches were often served for lunch or as a quick dinner option. They were enjoyed at home, packed for picnics, or even taken as a satisfying work lunch. Number 11. Egg Salad Sandwiches in the 1960s, the culinary world was focused on affordability and simplicity, and what better sandwich to represent that than the iconic egg salad sandwich? The perfect comfort food, egg salad sandwiches have a special place in American cuisine and have become a staple in every grandma's house. It's simple, yet satisfying, and has a few good-for-you qualities as well. 
hard-boiled eggs, mashed and mixed with mayo to create a creamy paste in the heart of an egg salad sandwich. The white bread usually would be toasted to give a crunchy texture to the sandwich. Egg salad sandwiches have their roots in American working class and have become a childhood memory for many baby boomers. So, if you're keen on revisiting your favorite memories of breakfast at Grandma's house, we suggest you better get cracking. Number 10. Bologna Sandwich You may have hated them, you may have loved them, but you could not escape these sandwiches that seemed to be a staple of every child's school lunch in the 1960s. Made out of discarded or fatty parts of meat, even organ meat in some places, bologna was more affordable than ham or salami, which led to its widespread use by the working class. And so came into being an American household staple, the bologna sandwich. Paired with cheese, this humble yet dynamic duo reigned the lunch bags of American children for decades. The sandwich could be served cold, making it a convenient option for packed lunches and picnics. Like Batman and Robin, bologna and cheese complement each other perfectly. While the popularity of bologna and cheese sandwiches has waned somewhat with the advent of more varied lunch options, the essence of the sandwich, a simple, satisfying combination of meat, cheese and bread, remains unchanged. Number 9. Liverwurst Sandwiches Even the name of the sandwich indicates that it's one of the worst kinds of sandwiches out there. Okay, worst may be a harsh word, but it's certainly not well liked, especially by children. As apparent from its name, liverwurst consists of a sausage made out of liver meat and offals, in a sandwich made on rye, pumpernickel or whole wheat, and dressed with mustard and sometimes raw onions. Liverwurst was in many kids' lunch bag rotation 30 years ago, though even then it seemed oddly old-fashioned. It was cheap, nutritious and easy to make. Plus, it's got that old-world European charm. Whether it was the smell or the coarse texture and grayish-brown color, liverwurst never managed to become a popular palate pleaser, not even amongst deli workers. Even deli workers complain that the sound of it slicing as it's smeared all over the slicer still gives them nightmares. Not solid, not soft, some odd place in the middle. Despite everything, liverwurst sandwiches are a delicacy that reflect a blend of traditional European cuisine and the mid-20th century American tastes. They offer a rich, savory taste experience that has stood the test of time. Number 8. Reuben Sandwich With a very disputed origin story, the Reuben Sandwich has resided in American culinary history as a classic go-to sandwich in delis throughout New York. It's a North American grilled sandwich composed of corned beef, Swiss cheese, sauerkraut, and Russian dressing or Thousand Island dressing, grilled between slices of rye bread. The Reuben sandwich was typically served hot and enjoyed with a side of potato salad, coleslaw, or pickles. With many variations available, this sandwich has proved to be versatile over time. For many, the Reuben sandwich evokes nostalgia from the classic American diner experience. It was commonly found on the menus of Jewish delis, diners and lunch counters, especially in cities with a strong Eastern European immigrant presence. Number 7. Pimento Sandwiches Back in the 1960s, making pimento sandwiches was a simple and fun process. These sandwiches were a popular snack or lunch option, known for their creamy, tangy and slightly spicy flavor. First, you need to gather your ingredients. The main ones were pimentos. These are sweet red peppers. You could buy them in jars already diced and ready to use cream cheese or mayonnaise. This made the pimento filling creamy and smooth. Bread, usually white bread because it was soft and easy to spread the filling on. To make the pimento filling, you started by taking a mixing bowl. You would put in the diced pimentos. If they were not already diced, you would chop them up into small pieces. Then you would add either cream cheese or mayonnaise. Some people even like to use a mixture of both for extra creaminess. Next, you would mix everything together. If you were using cream cheese, you might need to let it soften a bit at room temperature so it would blend more easily. The goal was to have a nice, spreadable mixture with the little bits of red pimento evenly distributed throughout. 
Now, it was time to assemble the sandwich. You would take two slices of bread and spread a generous amount of the pimento mixture onto one of the slices. Then, you would place the other slice of bread on top, pressing down slightly to make sure everything stuck together well. If you wanted to get fancy, you could cut the sandwiches into fun shapes, like triangles or rectangles. This was especially popular for parties or picnics. Sometimes, people even remove the crust to make the sandwiches look neater and more delicate. When serving, pimento sandwiches were often accompanied by a few sides of potato chips, pickles, or a small salad. They were perfect for lunch boxes, casual get-togethers, or just a simple meal at home. And that's how pimento sandwiches were made and enjoyed back in the 1960s. They were easy to make, tasty, and a bit of a treat. Number six, clubhouse sandwich. One of the foods that became super popular back then was the clubhouse sandwich, also called the club sandwich. So why was this sandwich such a big hit? Well, let's break it down in a simple way. First, the clubhouse sandwich is like a super tasty tower of flavors. It has layers of toasted bread, juicy turkey or chicken, fresh lettuce, ripe tomatoes, and sometimes even a slice of cheese. All these layers are stacked together and cut into neat quarters and held together with toothpicks. People loved this because it was filling and had a bit of everything, crunchy, salty, savory, and fresh all in one bite. The 1960s was also a time when eating out at diners and casual restaurants was really popular. These places needed to serve food that was quick to make, easy to eat, and delicious. The clubhouse sandwich fit the bill perfectly. It didn't require fancy ingredients or special cooking techniques, so it was easy for cooks to whip up quickly. Plus, it looked pretty impressive when served, which made customers happy. Another reason is that the 1960s was a time when more people were looking for convenient but tasty food options. Fast food was becoming a thing, but people still wanted something that felt a bit more special and homemade. The clubhouse sandwich was like the best of both worlds. It was quick and easy like fast food, but it still had that homemade, fresh taste that people loved. Let's not forget about the presentation. The clubhouse sandwich looked cool with its neatly stacked layers and colorful ingredients. It was Instagram worthy before Instagram even existed. People eat with their eyes first and a well-made clubhouse sandwich just looked delicious and inviting. So the clubhouse sandwich was a hit in the 1960s because it was tasty, convenient, easy to make and looked great. It combined everything people wanted in a meal during that groovy decade, making it a timeless favorite. Number five, patty melt. The patty melt became a sought after dish in the 1960s for a variety of reasons that all contributed to its widespread popularity. One of the key factors was its irresistible combination of flavors and textures. The patty melt featured a juicy beef patty, melted cheese and caramelized onions, all sandwiched between slices of toasted rye bread. Mmm. This blend of savory, cheesy, and slightly sweet elements made it a satisfying and delightful choice for many diners. Comfort food played a significant role during this era, and the patty melt fit the bill perfectly. It offered a hearty, warm meal that provided a sense of nostalgia and coziness. People craved familiar and reassuring flavors, and the patty melt delivered just that, making it a go-to option for a comforting, fulfilling meal. The simplicity and convenience of the patty melt also contributed to its popularity. With basic ingredients that were easy to source, the sandwich was straightforward to prepare. This made it an ideal choice for diners and casual restaurants, where quick and easy to make meals were essential. The patty melt could be made and served rapidly without compromising on taste, which was a win for both cooks and customers. Offering a refreshing variation from the standard hamburger, the patty melt introduced a unique twist with its use of rye bread instead of a traditional bun and the addition of caramelized onions. This distinct flavor profile provided an exciting alternative for those looking for something different yet familiar. The patty melt stood out on menus and appealed to people seeking a new take on a classic favorite. Diner culture was thriving in the 1960s 
and diners became social hubs in many communities. Known for their extensive menus and quick service, diners found the patty melt to be a perfect fit. Its ease of preparation and delicious taste made it a staple item that customers loved. As more people flocked to diners for the communal atmosphere and tasty food, the patty melt's popularity continued to rise. Visually and aromatically, the patty melt was hard to resist. The golden toasted bread and melted cheese made it look incredibly appetizing, while the enticing aroma of the cooked beef and onions drew people in. This sensory appeal added to its charm and made it even more popular. The patty melt's rise to fame in the 1960s can be attributed to its delicious flavor combination, comforting appeal, simplicity, and the vibrant diner culture of the time. Its unique twist on the classic burger and easy preparation made it a favorite for many, securing its place as an iconic dish of the era. Number four, tinned herring in tomato sauce tomato sandwiches. In the 1960s, tinned herring in tomato sauce and tomato sandwiches gained popularity for several reasons. Tinned herring in tomato sauce was a convenient and easy food option. The herring, a type of fish, came packed in a flavorful tomato sauce, making it ready to eat straight from the can. This simplicity made it a quick meal solution for busy families. The combination of the slightly salty fish and the sweet, tangy tomato sauce was both tasty and appealing. Additionally, tinned herring was affordable, which made it accessible to many households. To enjoy tinned herring and tomato sauce, people often served it with bread or crackers, sometimes adding a sprinkle of herbs like parsley for extra flavor. This convenient and ease of preparation made it a popular choice in many kitchens. Tomato sandwiches were another favorite during the 1960s. These sandwiches were simple to make and required only a few basic ingredients, fresh tomatoes, bread, mayonnaise or butter, and a pinch of salt and pepper. To make a tomato sandwich, you'd slice the tomatoes and place them between two slices of bread, spread with mayonnaise or butter, then add a little salt and pepper to taste. The result was a fresh, juicy sandwich that was perfect for a quick and easy lunch. The appeal of tomato sandwiches lay in their simplicity and refreshing taste, especially during the summer months when tomatoes were in season. They were quick to prepare, required no cooking, and were both inexpensive and delicious. This made them an ideal option for busy families looking for a fast and satisfying meal. Both tinned herring and tomato sauce and tomato sandwiches fit well into the lifestyle of the 1960s, which valued convenience, affordability, and good taste. These foods were easy to prepare, affordable and provided a tasty meal option that required minimal effort, making them popular choices in many households during that era. Number three, party finger sandwich. In the swinging 1960s, one appetizer stood out as a star of cocktail parties and gatherings, the party finger sandwich. Picture this, small, delicate sandwiches that fit perfectly between your fingers, filled with a variety of tasty ingredients. These sandwiches became a hit for several reasons. Firstly, the recipe for these party finger sandwiches was simple yet elegant. They typically consisted of crustless white or wheat bread, spread with creamy fillings like chicken salad, egg salad, or cucumber and cream cheese. These fillings were light and flavorful, making the sandwiches easy to eat in a social setting without being too heavy. The 1960s was a time of social gatherings and cocktail parties, where finger foods were all the rage. Party finger sandwiches fit perfectly into this scene. They were dainty, easy to handle, and looked pretty on serving trays. Their small size made them ideal for guests to nibble on while mingling, adding to the festive atmosphere of any gathering. Another reason for their popularity was their versatility. Hosts could get creative with the fillings, offering a variety of options to suit different tastes. From classic combinations to more adventurous flavors, party finger sandwiches allowed hosts to cater to their guests' preferences and dietary needs, making them a crowd pleaser at any event. The 1960s saw a rise in convenience and modernity, and party finger sandwiches fit this trend perfectly. They were quick and easy to assemble, requiring minimal preparation time. 
This made them a practical choice for hosts who wanted to impress their guests without spending hours in the kitchen. Visually, party finger sandwiches were appealing as well. The neatly cut bite-sized sandwiches with colorful fillings looked attractive on platters, tempting guests to reach for more. Their aesthetic appeal added to their popularity, making them a staple at social gatherings throughout the decade. Party finger sandwiches became popular in the 1960s due to their elegant simplicity, suitability for social occasions, versatility in fillings, ease of preparation, and visual appeal. They captured the spirit of the era's social gatherings and became a timeless favorite for those looking to add a touch of sophistication to their parties. Number 2. Thelma Lou's Finger Sandwiches In the heart of the 1960s America, Thelma Lou's Finger Sandwiches became a beloved staple at social gatherings and events. What made them so popular? Well, let's dive into the delicious details. Thelma Lou's Finger Sandwiches were famous for their simplicity and elegance. Made with soft, crustless bread and filled with a variety of creamy, flavorful ingredients like chicken salad, tuna salad or cucumber and cheese, these sandwiches were bite-sized delights that appealed to everyone. Their lightness made them easy to eat without feeling too full, perfect for mingling at parties and enjoyed with a cup of tea or a cocktail. During the 1960s, social gatherings and cocktail parties were all the rage. Finger foods like Thelma Lou's sandwiches fit right into this social scene. They were small and neat, making them convenient for guests to pick up and nibble on while chatting. Their delicate appearance also added a touch of sophistication to any event, contributing to their popularity as a must-have item on party menus. Another reason for their widespread appeal was their versatility. Thelma Lou's sandwiches could be filled with a variety of fillings, allowing hosts to cater to different tastes and dietary preferences. Whether someone preferred savory chicken salad or refreshing cucumber and cheese, there was a finger sandwich to satisfy every palate, making them a crowd-pleasing choice at any gathering. In addition to their taste and versatility, Thelma Lou's finger sandwiches were easy to prepare, which was a big plus for hosts. With minimal effort, hosts could create platters of these sandwiches, arranging them neatly and garnishing them attractively to enhance their visual appeal. This convenience made them a go-to option for hosts looking to impress their guests without spending hours in the kitchen. Thelma Lou's finger sandwiches became popular in the 1960s because of their delightful flavors, elegant presentation, suitability for social occasions, versatility in fillings, and ease of preparation. They captured the essence of the era's social gatherings and became a timeless favorite, cherished for their ability to bring people together over delicious bite-sized treats. Number 1. Loaf Sandwich The Loaf Sandwich, also known as the Submarine Sandwich or Sub, gained popularity around the world for its unique and versatile appeal. Imagine a long loaf of soft bread filled with layers of delicious ingredients, meats, cheeses, fresh vegetables and condiments. This sandwich became a favorite in many countries for several reasons. Firstly, the loaf sandwich offered a satisfying and hearty meal in a convenient handheld form. It was perfect for people on the go who needed a substantial yet portable lunch option. The soft bread held everything together without becoming soggy, making it easy to eat without utensils, a big plus for busy individuals and workers. In different countries, the loaf sandwich took on various names and local flavors. In the United States, it became known as the submarine or sub sandwich, inspired by its resemblance to a submarine shape. In Italy, it's called a panino, typically featuring ingredients like prosciutto, mozzarella and fresh vegetables. In France, it's known as the baguette sandwich, filled with meats, cheeses and crisp lettuce. The popularity of the loaf sandwich also stemmed from its versatility. It could be customized with a wide range of fillings, allowing people to tailor it to their preferences. Whether you preferred a classic Italian combo, a hearty meatball sub, or a veggie packed option, there was a loaf sandwich variation for everyone. This adaptability made it a favorite choice across different cultures and tastes. The loaf sandwich became synonymous with casual dining and quick bites. 
It was commonly found in delis, sandwich shops and fast food chains, offering a convenient and affordable meal option. Its popularity was further fueled by its appearance in movies, TV shows and cultural references, solidifying its status as a beloved sandwich choice worldwide. Visually appealing and packed with flavor, the loaf sandwich became a go-to option for lunches, picnics and gatherings. Its combination of fresh ingredients, satisfying bread and customizable fillings made it a staple in the culinary landscape of many countries, enduring as a timeless favorite enjoyed by people of all ages and all backgrounds. There were 20 retro sandwich ideas from the 1960s. Comment below if you think we missed something you like to eat. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe.